Let us try to sketch the polynomial y equals 2 plus 12x minus x cubed. Right? So the first step that we are going to do is to determine the x and y intercepts of the given function. And to determine the x intercepts, we're going to set y be equal to 0. And if y is equal to 0, right? so let me just change the color of this one to blue. So if, x, uh, if y is equal to 0, then this will now be 0 equals 2 plus 12x minus x cubed. And solve, solving for the roots of x, you can use your calculator to do so. So if we're going to bring out our calculator here to solve for the values of x or the roots of x, so let me just change the mode to equation of polynomial degree 3. And then if we're going to input our coefficients here, we have negative 1, we have 12, uh, right? or the coefficient of x squared is 0. The coefficient of x is 12, and the, co the constant is equal to 2. Alright, now, x1, right? So, x1 is equal to 3.545. Let us just take uh, three decimal places here. And then, x2, we also have negative 0 0.167. And x3, we have negative 3.378. Alright, so these are the roots of x. Now, if you're going to notice, uh, my calculator here says that it has a complex, uh, it has an imaginary value, but if you're going to notice, the imaginary value is raised to negative 16. So, this is already, already negligible. Right, so, so here are now the roots of x, or these are now the x-intercepts of this given function. Now, solving for uh, the y-intercept, so if we're going to solve for the y-intercept, we're going to set x b equal to 0, and if we're going to set x b equal to 0, then y is equal to 2 plus 12 multiplied by 0 minus 0 raised to 3 or this is equal to 2. Okay, so these are now the x-intercepts, and this is now the y-intercept. Alright, now, the next step is to, to test for symmetry. Alright, so to test if there is a symmetry with respect to the x-axis, or with respect to the y-axis, or with respect to the origin, or... Uh, does it has that does it have a symmetry with all of the axes right so so testing for symmetry the first uh, test is to change y change y to negative y so the given function is y equals 12 plus uh, 2 plus 12 x minus x cubed so changing y to negative y this will now be negative y equals 2 plus 12x minus x cubed. Alright, so let me just rewrite here the given equation. So y equals 2 plus 12x minus x cubed. Now, if you're going to compare this uh, resulting equation to the given function, there is a change in value here because uh, negative y is not the same as positive y. Therefore, no symmetry. Alright, so therefore, uh, this test uh, failed. So, there is no symmetry with x uh, axis, right? So, there no symmetry with respect to the x axis. Now, if we're going to test for uh, another one, so we're going to change x to negative x. So, this will now be y equals 2 plus 12 multiplied by negative x minus negative x raised to the third power. And if we're going to simplify this one, this is y equals 2 minus 12x, right? So negative x raised to 3 will give us negative x cubed multiplied by positive uh, negative uh, value. So this will now be plus x cubed. And if we're going to compare the resulting equation to the given function, it is also not the same. Therefore, no symmetry with 
y axis. Right? So, no symmetry with respect to y axis. And for the last test, we're going to change x to negative x and y to negative y simultaneously. So, we're going to change both variables to its negative value. And doing so, we have negative y equals 2 plus 12 multiplied by negative x minus negative x raised to 3. So, this will now be negative y equals 2 minus 12x plus x cubed. So, if you're going to notice, the given function is positive y equals 2 plus 12x minus x cubed, and the resulting equation here is negative y equals 2 minus 12x plus x cubed. So, even if you're going to uh, multiply both sides by negative 1, right? so by property of equality, we can do that, we have y equals negative 2 plus 12x minus x cubed. And again, by comparing it to the original equation, so this is positive 1, positive y equals 2 plus 12x minus x cubed, while this is y equals negative 2 plus 12x minus x cubed, we have a different sign with 2. So again, this test failed, so no symmetry with origin. Right? So no symmetry with the origin. So, for this uh, function, there is no symmetry. Alright? So, the next step is to determine the critical points. Right? So, in determining the critical points, we're going to set y prime b equal to 0. So, again, if, we're, if I'm going to rewrite the equation here or the given function y equals 2 plus 12x minus x cubed, y prime is equal to 12 minus 3x squared. And setting y prime to 0, so this will give us 12 minus uh, 3x squared equals 0. And if we're going to bring out 3, because 3 is a common factor here, so we have 4 minus x squared. So if we're going to simplify this one, we can divide both sides by 3. So it will give us 0 equals 4 minus x squared. And solving for the rest of x, we can factor out 4 minus x squared. So that will become 2 minus x multiplied by 2 plus x. Therefore, the values of x are 2 and the other value of x will be negative 2. Now we already know the x coordinates of the critical points. We're going to locate its y coordinate. And to do that, we're going to substitute this x equals 2 to the original equation. Right? So this will now be equal to, uh, let me just bring out my calculator here. So this is now uh, 2 plus 12x minus x cubed. Right? And if I'm going to press calc here, x equals 2, y equals 18. How about if x is equal to negative 2? So pressing calc, negative 2, negative 14. Right, so the points, uh, the critical points, uh, we have 2, negative 18, and we also have negative 2, negative 14. Now, let us perform the first derivative test to determine whether these critical points are a maximum or minimum point. And to do that, we're going to take the first derivative. So y prime equals 12 minus 3x squared. So taking up this point to 18, right? So taking up 2 and 18. And if I'm going to draw a line here, right? So this is x equals 2, this is x equals 1, and this is x equals 3. So using the first derivative test, I'm going to substitute uh, a value of x which is less than 2 and a value of x which is greater than 2. And if there is a change in sign, then we can determine whether this point is a maximum or a minimum point. So doing so, if x is equal to 1, right? so if x equals 1, y prime is equal to Right, so again, bringing out our calculator here, so let me just type the equation of uh, the first derivative here. So we have 3x squared 
and calculate. So if x is equal to 1, the value of y prime is equal to 9. So let me just put it here. And if x is equal to, right, so if x is equal to 3, then y prime is equal to negative 15. All right, so there is a change uh, in sign of y prime from positive to negative. Therefore, this point to 18 is a maximum point. Next, taking up negative 2 and negative 14, and if we're going to draw a line in here, so this is x equals negative 2, this is x equals negative 3, and this is x equals negative 1. So again, performing the first derivative test here, if x is equal to negative 3, the value of y prime is equal to, bringing out the calculator here, so this, is, this will now be negative uh, 3, so this is negative 15, right? And if x is equal to negative 1, right? So this will now be y prime equals 9, positive 9, right? So there is also a change in sign from negative to positive. So as x increases, sign changes from negative to positive. Therefore, the critical point negative 2 and negative 14 is a minimum point. Alright, so now we determined or we have already located the critical points and determined whether these points are maximum or minimum. The next step is to locate the points of inflection. Right, and locating the points of inflection, we're going to set y double prime be equal to 0. And since y prime is equal to 12 minus 3x squared, therefore y double prime is equal to negative 6x. And equating y double prime to 0, so this will give us 0 equals negative 6x or Solving for the value of x here, we have x equals 0, right? Now, if we're going to determine the y-coordinate of this point of inflection, because this is already the x-coordinate of the point of inflection, so we're just going to substitute 0 to the original function. And again, the original function is y equals 2 plus 12x minus 3x cubed. So if we're going to substitute 0 here, y will be equal to 2. So the points of inflection or the point of inflection is located at 0, 2. Now that we already uh, determined the points of inflection, the last step is to determine the behavior of the graph in each region, right? So we're going to uh, determine the behavior of the graph in each region. Now, the number of regions... Right? So the number of regions depends on the number of asymptotes and the number of the x-intercepts. But in here, since the given is not a rational fraction, we're just going to consider the x-intercepts. Right? So if we're going to go back to our solution, the number of x-intercepts is 3. So we have 3 x-intercepts here. Right? So now let me just copy this one. And let me just paste it here. Alright, so since we have three x-intercepts, the number of regions that we're going to consider will be 3 plus 1. Right, so we, ho we, ha we have four regions and in this step, we're going to determine uh, the behavior of the graph in each region. So to do that, uh, let me just uh, draw a line here. So we have here the x-axis. This is x equals 0. This is x equals negative 0 0.167 and in here we have negative 3.378 and we have positive 3.545 in here. Right. Now, we're going to determine the behavior of the graph in this region, in this region, in this region, and in this region. Right. So let's start with 
x less than negative 3.378, right? So if x is less than negative 3.378, what is the value of y, right? So to determine the behavior of y, if x is less than negative 3.378, we bring out our calculator again and we type the equation or the expression of the given function. So the given function is 2 plus 12x minus x cubed, right? So that will be 12x minus x cubed. So if we're going to substitute a value that is less than negative 3.378 here, we can determine the value of y, right? So the value of x that I'm going to substitute will be negative 4 because negative 4 is less than negative 3.378. And the value of y is a positive 1. So we can say that if x is less than negative 3.378, y is positive. So the next region would be a uh, region between negative 3.378 and negative 0.167 or in mathematical term that will be x is greater than negative 3.378 but less than negative 0.167 right so in here we're just going to substitute a value that is in between negative 3.378 and negative 0.167 say we substitute a value which is negative 2 and y is negative 14 which means to say that the behavior of the graph in this region is negative all right so y is negative for the next region we have uh, x is greater than negative 0 0.167 all right so x greater than negative 0 0.167 but less than 3.545 so what is the behavior of the graph in this region? And to do that, we're going to substitute a value in between these two uh, x-intercepts in the original uh, equation. So this will now be, say, we substitute a value 2. If x is equal to 2, which, is, which lies in between uh, these two values of x, y is positive. And lastly, if x is greater than 3.545. So if x is greater than 3.545, so if we're going to substitute a value greater than 3.545, say 4, the value of y is negative. Right? So y is negative. Alright. This means to say that if this is your Cartesian plane, right? And this is negative x equals negative 0 0.167. This is x equals negative 3.378. And this is x equals positive 3.545. The behavior of the graph, right? So let me just draw a broken lines in here. Right? To separate the different regions. So, if x is less than negative 3.378, y is positive. That means to say that the behavior of the graph in this region would be above the x-axis. If in between, if x is in between negative 3.378 and negative 0.167, y is negative. Meaning, the graph will be below the x-axis. If x is in between negative 0 0.167 and 3.545, the graph is above the x-axis because y is positive. Alright, and lastly, if x is greater than 3.545, the graph is below the x-axis because y is negative. Now, it's time to sketch y equals 2 plus 12x minus x cubed. First, let's have our Cartesian plane here. We have the x and y axis, and we're just going to label them with equal scaling. The first step is to plot the intercepts. So, the x-intercepts are 
negative 3.378, negative 0 0.167, and positive 3.545, while the y-intercept is at positive 2. Next is to plot the critical points. We have the maximum point 2, 18, and the minimum point negative 2, negative 14. Next is to plot the point of inflection. The point of inflection is located at point 0, 2. Now, let us look at the different regions of the graph. So for the region x is less than negative 3.378, y is positive. Thus, the graph lies above the x-axis. For x is greater than negative 3.378 but less than negative 0.167, y is negative. Thus, the graph lies below the x-axis. For the region x is greater than negative 0.167 but less than 3.545, y is positive. Thus, the curve in this region lies above the x-axis. And for the last region, x greater than 3.545, y is negative. Therefore, in this region, the graph lies below the x-axis. Now that we know the behavior of the graph in each region and considering that the curve is not symmetrical with respect to the x-axis nor with respect to the y-axis nor with the origin, we now trace the points and the curve will look like this one.